Greetings to all. In the session, we are going to discuss about uh, intermediate chemistry and the international floor for entrance and competitive exams as well. India is conducting JE advanced and JE mains examination for entrance into the IIT and NIT stream. NEET exam will be conducted for medical entrance exam across the India. And uh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh government are conducting exam called MSET for BTEC uh, entrance examination, BTEC admission it will be. And also all the competitive exams pertaining general studies question paper, the content what we are discussing is very much fetching. Right. Let's go with the content first. The Nobel Prize in the Chemistry 2013 was awarded jointly to Martin Karplus, Michael Levitt, and Ole Warshall for the development of multi scale models for the complex chemical systems. Right. Multi scale models were invented for complex chemical systems for their outstanding contribution. These three scientists are together. Who are they? Martin Karplus, Michael Levitt, and Orly Warshall together accorded with the prize, most esteemed world recognition called Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry for the year 2013. Let's go with the detailed description about this. Martin Karplus uh, contributed one by third for this one, and Michael Levitt also contributed one by third. Ali Warshall also contributed one by third for this Nobel Prize. And uh, there is a brief info regarding these three scientists are mentioned over here. Let's go with the uh, details about these eminent scientists contributed for the 2013 Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry. And this was accorded by Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. And um, the scientist or Martin Karplus belongs to University D. Strasbourg, France, and Harvard University, Cambridge. Belongs to United States of America. Michael Levitt belongs to Stanford University School of Medicine, Stanford, USA. And Ella Warshall belongs to University of Southern California, Los, Los Angeles, uh, United States of America. All these scientists together worked upon development of multi-scale models for the complex chemical systems. Let's go with the expansion of the concept of what they explored, what they researched, right? Chemistry used to create the models of molecules using plastic balls and sticks. Ball and stick models are available, which give the more description, valuable information regarding the chemical entities. Right Today, the modeling is carried out in computers. 1970s, Martin Karplus, Michael Levitt, and Ari Barshall laid the foundation for powerful programs that are used to understand and predict the chemical process. How the chemical process get carried, that program was designed by these three scientists together. Computer models mirroring real life have become the crucial for most advances in the field of chemistry today. Right. So here, whatever program which used to give the greatest extent of analysis for the chemical processes, what path they are proceeding for, in what way the reaction is moving on, in order to analyze, they gone with the uh, uh, establishment of the unique program. Right. Chemical reactions occurs at a lightning speed. In a fraction of milliseconds, electrons jump from one atomic level to any other. Classical chemistry has a hard time to keeping up and it is virtually impossible experimentally map every little step in the chemical process. Being electron is the tiny subatomic particle, it will, it will move from one energy level to another energy level within short span of second, blink of eye. So there is a possibility of the reaction, completion of the reaction. So that, that kind of traditional chemical pathways, uh, uh, traditional chemical devices are not able to analyze what is the path in order to accomplish this type of reaction. That's the reason why here is the unique program. Uh, that is the research artisan, we can say, which uh, developed in such a way so that that span, that milli span of second is also can be captured and that that will be visualized, that will be analyzed in the, uh, the uh, what, um, what we can say, very uh, experimental way so that they got uh, awarded with this prestigious prize called Nobel Prize, right? 
that uh, method is awarded in the Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry. Scientists uh, let computers unveil chemical process such as a cat um, catalyst purification, exhaust fumes, or photosynthesis in the green leaves. So different methods they've taken into the standard reference in order to go for the analysis. They've gone with their research in that field, how the mechanism is proceeding, what will be the pathway in order to accomplish the reaction. Everything keen observation got done by these three scientists together. The work of Karplus, Levitt and Walsh, Warshall is groundbreaking in that they managed to make Newton's classical physics uh, work side by side with the fundamentally different quantum physics. Okay, whatever Newtonian theory which already established in in sidelines with that theory, they got developed and explored the mechanism in the field of chemistry in order to explore this uh, uh, how to analyze the pathways previously. Chemistry had to choose uh, to use either R. The strength of the classical physics was the calculation for were uh, simple and could be used to model really large molecules. Its weakness is to afford no way to simulate um, chemical reactions. For that purpose, chemists instead had to use quantum physics. So here, traditional chemistry, chemical pathways, chemical assumption, hypothesis, uh, models will be there, but they are not giving the realistic information. Rather, they they uh, they gone through the modern quantum physics methodology so that they uh, requisite answer what requisite information what they are expecting so that was obtained in the accurate manner by means of their pathways right but such calculation required enormous, uh, enormous computing power could therefore only be carried out for small molecules okay whatever quantum physics formulas are there and their uh, hypothesis is there the entire one is required to be computer power computing power is required uh, then only we can go for their calculations this year's Nobel laureates in the chemistry that is 2013 took the best from both worlds and devised methods that use the both classical and quantum physics. So whatever they uh, they established that carried that was uh, that was rooted on classical as well as quantum physics both. So both the techniques were taken into the collaboration and a new unique program got installed right. Uh, how the computer performs the quantum theoretical calculations and atoms target proteins, how they are interacting with the drugs. The rest of the large protein is simulated using less demanding classical physics. These many pathways are analyzed and taken into the consideration. So by means of these, they got explored, they got advanced their research today. Computer is just as important tool for chemist at the test tube. Simulations are so realistic that they predict the outcome of the traditional experiment. So here simulation labs will be there that will give the pre-designed kind of set, experimental setup in the laboratory. What we are assuming to do, what we are planning to do that can be, um, that can be performed on the compu computer screen with the simulation lab so that uh, that will give the kind of preliminary idea about the entire experiment whether the experiment is feasible or not entire description will be provided in a prior experimental uh, installation so that the simulation lab and the utilization of the computer tools in the laboratory becoming essential in the field of chemistry especially being technologies explored everywhere so that it is the kind of technical advancement in the field of chemistry for, in the context of uh, um, in the context of uh, research exploration right uh, so, so that uh, this is the kind of method uh, for the development of multi-scale models for uh, complex chemical systems in order to analyze the chemical system, in order to predict the chemical pathways through which they are proceeding with. A um, unique program was invented that was recorded with the Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry for the year 2013. Let's uh, move on to another question that is collected from Cambridge Assessment International Education. So iron is a transition method. It rather, we can say it is the question, we got the a clear information about the compound or metal 
why we are taking iron as the reference or specimen compound over here because most of the machinery most of the devices most of the instrument most of the uh, kind of installations were done by means of the metal uh, that is called iron iron and its alloys found wide range of applications all across the world uh, it is the most abundantly available metal first thing and most widely used kind of uh, material. So application point of view, the highest utilization metal will be iron itself. It can be fabricated into any complicated machinery, any complicated material, any complicated device as well. That's the reason why iron and uh, its alloys extensive study is more prominent and it finds the wide range of applications as well. That's why let's find a few facts related with the iron that is called a transition metal belongs to the deep block atomic number 26 and d6 electronic system it will be and a few facts are provided over here let's go with the detailed explanation with this a list of properties the iron able to show in general are iron is a good conductor of electricity so everybody aware uh, most of the metals uh, in the entire periodic table around 80 percent contributed with the metals and very few are said to be non-metals very uh, tiny part is said to be a metalloids right so the major part of the entire periodic table is composed of metals only all the metals are good conductors of electricity so you can notice good conductors of electricity examples are provided over copper is the best one so uh, highest electrical conduct conductivity is accorded for the metal called a silver uh, but it, it it is not available that extent and um, uh, because of its uh, what a uh, high cost of uh, extraction and utilization abundance everything matters over so that it is a friendly used rarely used for the conduction purpose rather we can go with the uh, abundantly valuable metal called copper everywhere copper conducting materials can be used in general even steel is the conductor aluminum is also the part of conducting material bronze is the kind of alloy which uh, prepared uh, uh, also the kind of uh, conductor iron is also said to be a conductor this is the way gold nickel platinum brass everything uh, which is made up of metal is said to be a good conductor of electricity so that it is a common property accorded for all the metals iron forms soluble salts so iron whenever existing in the form of salts uh, that added to the water it is familiar to water solubility right let's go with a few examples which are composed by the iron iron containing salts are mentioned over here approximate saturation limit saturation means maximum extent of solubility in the water is said to be it's a saturation point iron acetate was taken perichlorite hexahydrate is another compound then uh, iron boron tetrafluoride uh, it, it is a kind of complex we can say again it is a hydrated form of iron tetrafluoroborate then uh, uh, feot have taken twice these many complexes are provided and uh, whenever they added to water they are most familiar for water solubility few compounds are mentioned for your reference uh, iron forms colored compounds being iron is the transition metal and able to give the DD transition in general so that we can say it able to give the colored complexes various colors are mentioned whatever color given for that box that is the color of that complex that compound iron oxide this is said to be ferrous oxide ferrous oxide is the kind of black color substance and uh, ferrous sulfide is also the black color substance uh, this is the kind of ferric sulfide we can say even this is also black in color Ferric oxide is a reddish brown color. Uh, iron hydroxide sulfate, again, ferric exists in plus three, so that brown color. Ferric substances are uh, brown color or else uh, red color itself. Ferric substances are brown or red in color. Two possibilities we have. Here, this is said to be FEC and taken by ferrous nitrile. This ferrous nitrile existing in gold color. Here it is Fe2O3 is called ferric oxide which is the blood red color substance. Ferric hydroxide is also blood red color as well. Then we can see iron uh, hydroxide and this is the acetate. Again, you can notice iron existing in plus three. 
iron is in combination with acetate ligand and the hydroxyl ligand as well in the plus 3 oxidation state around the central iron it is existing in blood red so in general you can observe whenever iron is in plus 3 so that uh, blood red color is noticed being our blood is also composed by iron so that our blood is existing in red color. That is also the simplest example. You can notice iron uh, hemoglobin pigment will be there. Uh, here you can notice FEPO4. Phosphate salt of iron was taken. Hydroxide salt of iron was taken. Carbonate salt of iron was taken. Uh, ferrous phosphate is a kind of... Uh, what greenish yellow color substance and uh, ferrous hydroxide is a white color ferrous uh, carbonate is the white color substance right so here ferry ferrocyanide if you observe that is a white color complex ferry ferrocyanide is the kind of blue color complex so here ferry ferrocyanide is existing in a uh, intense blue color this is the way various complexes you can notice. So these are existing in various colors because iron is the transition metal. Being uh, D block, uh, D orbitals are degenerated in nature and less energy gap among. So that excitation of electrons from lower to higher, D orbitals are the most common thing. DD transition is the cause, <coughs> is the cause for coloration of the complexes. <coughs> Sorry. Iron has variable oxidation states. Not only iron, most of the transition metals are existing in various colors, various oxidation states as well. Here you can notice iron able to release uh, electrons and gives rise to the ferrous. Ferrous in turn converted into ferric as well. This is the way Iron can be converted into ferrous and ferric so that it is the uh, it is the kind of ferrous ferric are the common oxidation states of the iron naturally occurring. Iron can exist in ferrous and ferric in general. But let's go with iron able to exist in plus two plus three. This is these are mentioned in the box because these are the commonly observed oxidation states around the central iron. Apart from that, plus 4 is possible, plus 5, plus 6 are also existing, but commonly visible are plus 2 and plus 3 only. These are also possible. These many possibilities you can notice, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6. But among most of familiar are only plus 2 and plus 3, right? And the next point we are going to uh, discuss about acts as a catalyst catalyst the role of the catalyst is to enhance the rate of reaction and cut down the time of the reaction and enhance the yield of the product so many advantages are there and disadvantages are cut short so that is the role of catalyst decreasing the activation energy increasing the product yield and decreasing the time of reaction is the aim of uh, addition of the catalyst iron catalyst in the Haber process of ammonia synthesis. Ammonia synthesis is most important because it is the most important fertilizer in the field of agriculture crop plants, right? Ammonia, NPK are the most important elements to grow the plants. So that ammonia is very important to grow the plants to give the high yield of the product of in uh, crop land. So that iron catalyst plays a prominent role in this Haber's process for ammonia synthesis by combining nitrogen gas with hydrogen. So that it is one of the example. You can go with any, any kind of uh, compound that can be catalyzed with iron metal. Here you can notice initially we have water. Ketone can be converted into a uh, hydroxy compound. This is a kind of reduction. Reduction process can be facilitated by means of iron metal. And neither iron containing compound you can notice and here another iron containing compounds are there which are, are acting like a catalyst in so many kind of synthetic protocols, organic synthesis, inorganic, uh, complex manufacturing, so many ways iron forms, iron used as a catalyst over there, a few examples are listed over. And uh, next is about iron forms a basic hydroxide, <laughs> basic oxide, sorry. Iron forms a basic oxide. Uh, always any metal oxide is said to be a basic or alkaline in nature. That is a common criteria. Two things we have to understand. Metal oxides are basic. 
non metal oxides are acidic the simplest example if you go with sodium oxide that is called a basic alkaline uh, oxide if you go with carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the acidic oxide so that metal oxides are basic in nature non metal oxides are acidic in nature being iron is the metal it ox its oxide is said to be a basic oxide okay iron oxide is basic in nature it can be proved by adding water whenever water is added to iron oxide that transformed into ferric hydroxide being ferric hydroxide is a uh, is a perfect base base in nature hydroxide releasing in nature so that you can say it is the basic compound this is the way entire general characteristics of iron are mentioned being iron is the most abundant and most application oriented metal in the entire periodic table so that the minimum information is very essential to know move on to question number three question number three is collected from 2016 question paper paper one question it is a geometries of ammonia complexes of nickel platinum zinc respectively all these metals belongs to transition or not transition these metals are the part of d block because zinc is also there zinc is called a d block but not transition so that we can't categorize all the metals of transition so rather we can say conveniently d block metals all these three d block metals are able to form complexes with ammonia but not with the same geometry their geometries are entirely different we have to go for what nickel ammonia complex geometry, what platinum ammonia complex, what zinc ammonia complex. Nickel ammonia complex existing in <clears throat> nickel of D8 system and uh, there is a provision whenever ammonia is combining with nickel, there is a provision to get sp3d2 hybridization that accorded with the octahedral geometry. So that octahedral geometry is given in the option A and option D uh, strike of B and C options. Uh, with this move on to platinum generally platinum palladium complexes are square planar maximum extent of platinum palladium complexes are square planar either it may be ammonia either it may be chloro either it may be pyridine whatever kind of ligand it might be so that platinum and palladium complexes are existing in in a square planar geometry so that wherever second option square planar you can uh, you can go for that analysis so only a option is having square planar or the second instance but uh, d option is having tetrahedral so that struck uh, strike of this option d only the possibility is a platinum square planar complex are recorded with dsp2 hybridization one d orbital one S orbital, two P orbitals get combined so that DSP2 hybridization giving a square planar geometry. Moving to zinc, zinc is the kind of D10 system in the plus two oxidation state around the central zinc. And the D10 system is there that is convenient for tetrahedral geometry whenever combining with the ammonia ligand. So that tetrahedral geometry is recorded with SP3 hybridization that is given in the option A. Octahedral is for nickel ammonia complex. Obviously, platinum complex is a square planar and zinc complex with ammonia is a tetrahedral in nature. Let's go with the detailed uh, script of that uh, geometries. Ni nickel hexamine is provided over here. This is a cationic complex. You can notice it able to give the octahedral geometry with sp3d2 hybridization. And... Uh, D8 system, the nickel will be, and the six ligand contribute 12 electrons in order to form the coordinate covalent bond. A detailed information is there. Platinum ammonia complex are existing in a square planar, being a DSP2 is the hybridization and platinum existing. Nickel, platinum, palladium belongs to same group. In the same line, they are recorded with the D8 electronic system will be there. They are requiring they are requiring uh, square planar geometry uh, in this manner. All four ligands are con uh, are uh, conveniently segregated on the four corners of square planar geometry. Whenever you move to zinc, 
zinc and uh, uh, combining with the ammonia so that uh, there is a tetrahedral complex you can notice zinc surrounded with the four ammonia molecules in the square uh, sorry in the tetrahedral geometry with the sp3 hybridization so that all four ammonia ligands are occupying tetrahedral corners over there this is about the convenient information regarded with the whole complexes of d block elements provided they are forming complexes with the um, ammonia ammonium ligand so that this is the uh, expected answer uh, expected answer is option a for question three option a is the correct answer let's go with the question number four question number four is collected from organic chemistry and moreover it is the basic information regarding carboxylic acids aromatic carboxylic acid and uh, in in uh, specific you can say benzoic acid the correct order of acidity for the following compounds is Initially, the compound taken is benzoic acid where you can notice two hydroxy on their ortho position. Whatever subsequent uh, uh, just side by carbons are there, those two carbons are said to be ortho, second and sixth positions. And third and fifth positions are regarded as meta. Fourth position is designated as para. Everybody aware about are the positions are occupied by hydroxy on this benzoic acid and the second compound having only one hydroxy third compound is having hydroxy at the meta position and the fourth compound is having a hydroxy at the para position we have to go for the irregular order of their acidity in order to assign their acidity the compound Whichever provided, uh, so the general compound is benzoic, a skeletal compound is designated as a benzoic acid only. What is the effect of substitution that to be noticed over here? Okay, hydroxy is the kind of, hydroxy is the kind of ligand which occupying on the ortho position having higher impact on that acidity rather than, rather than meta and para position. Whoever, whoever present on the ortho position showing ortho effect ortho effect is more stronger in comparison to meta and para wherever ortho are there you can go for that higher impact so among one and two there is a ambiguity again they are squirreling each other because both are ortho substituents only but in between these two you can go for this compound in specific because two ortho positions got occupied by hydroxy so that this is of higher priority towards a, a higher acidity of carboxylic acid, more as or the effect you can notice. And the next level is accorded for this compound number two. And the next is given for meta and least is given for this para compound. And uh, a detailed explanation being uh, uh, are the substitution giving highest uh, highest stability in comparison to the carboxylic acid carboxylate is more convenient uh, carboxylate is more convenient to form the hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding is a peculiar nature among the compound having hydrogen suitable to bind up with the more electronegative oxygen, fluorine or nitrogen. In the entire periodic table we have uh, only three elements to rise to observe the hydrogen bonding for them whenever carboxylic acid is there if it is losing if it is losing uh, what uh, carboxylic acid if it is losing h plus what happens you can subsequently achieve carboxylate always uh, the reaction is feasible whenever the product is more stable, exceptional stability if it is given for the product than the reactant uh, then only the reaction is uh, far rapid okay so that here carboxylate you can notice this carboxylate is having two ortho hydroxies these ortho hydroxies are suitable to form the hydrogen bonding with two oxygen atoms more the hydrogen bonding more will be the stability outstanding stability for two hydroxy at ortho position and next is accorded for the uh, uh, only one ortho position substitution over there only one hydrogen bonding is there later on and uh, this is the kind of hydrogen bonding is possible here as well but uh, the extent of bond is uh, somewhat strained a para position there is no way provision you you can't uh, generate because uh, this extent of bond formation being hydrogen bonding is very weak uh, partial bond only that may not go for para position rather ortho is more convenient and next level one ortho is more convenient meta some 
somewhat it is possible para novae provision so that you can put four at the fourth position three at the third position one it at, at the higher position being two or though with the higher rate of hydrogen bonding after the removal of h plus whatever conjugate base carboxylate generated is exceptionally stabilized by two side two way hydrogen bonding you can clearly observe over there this is the right representation for high stability on the next level one side hydrogen bonding with one substitution of hydroxy with the compound number two this is the way uh, question number four option number a is the right answer let's go with the another question question number five the relation between the stopping potential and the frequency is correctly represented by work function here stopping potential is given by v naught frequency is denoted with nu and uh, pi is regarded as the work function krindi vaati lo niluvarinche potential mariyu pauna punyam la sambandhanni teliye jese samikaran okay so we have to give the relation between the stopping potential and the frequency related equation right where work function is one of the component in that okay the exact relation is v naught is equal to h nu by e minus pi by e so here whatever remaining options are there may not be correct the exact answer is option number three let's see how can we get this option three over there according to the question stopping potential cutoff potential is defined cutoff potential stopping potential alternatively called as cutoff potential this is defined as required potential for stopping the removal of electron from the metal surface. For example, we have the metal. In order to remove the electron, how much extent of potential to be supplied is called it's a stopping potential. Right? When the incident light energy is greater than the work potential of the metal on the incident light focused. Right? Stopping potential does not depend upon intensity of incident radiation. Whatever the uh, whatever the strength of light coming, that strength will not impact the stopping potential. On increasing the intensity value of saturated current increases, whereas stopping potential remains unchanged. Stopping potential is independent of incident radiation intensity. Okay. <laughs> For the given intensity of radiation, stopping potential depends upon the frequency. Higher the frequency of incident light, higher will be the value of stopping potential. There is a direct proportionality. If the frequency value increases, stopping potential value also increases. Frequency means cycles per second. Number of complete waves that pass through the uh, given point per second. Frequency depends upon wavelength and given by the equation H nu is equal to C1. Lambda is the wavelength. Nu is the frequency. C is the speed of light. Okay. H nu is equal to C1. Where it can be represented as uh, Ke max is equal to. This is nothing but potential energy. Max is equal to H nu minus pi is equal to h nu minus pi nu is equal to c by lambda right you can represent the same equation h c by lambda minus pi so that we can write a uh, uh, potential energy max is equal to ev uh, is equal to h c by lambda into work function that is represented in v naught is equal to h v, h nu by e minus pi by e that is in option number three for question number five option three is the correct answer Move on to last question of the session where the correct increasing order of electronegativity is. Electronegativity means whenever two atoms are combining with a covalent bond, the tendency to pull the electrons towards the atom is called its strength. That is called its electronegativity. Greater the electronegativity, more polar the covalent bond is. If you go with chlorine, chlorine, both the chlorines are homoatomic, so that bond will remain in between the chlorine atoms because it equally contributed, equally shared. Whenever hydrochloric acid is taken, hydrogen is of least electronegative, chlorine is of highest electronegative. Bonded electrons are strongly pulled towards chlorine so that you can achieve positive and negative conventions and the H plus and the Cl minus. That is the way electronegativity is the measure of nature of the bond. 
based on the electronegativity difference only, you can categorize either the bond is ionic bond or covalent bond or co coordinate covalent bond. What might it will be? That is purely relying on the Mullikan scale. Mullikan devised uh, the electronegativity, that quantification of the values are provided. The entire periodic table elements are calculated with the electronegativity values among all fluorine is of highest electronegativity with the magnitude of 4. 4 is the highest electronegativity value accorded as per the Mullikan scale. So that is regarding electronegativity. But here fluorine is not given. Boron, carbon, sulfur, chlorine are given. In order to go for their electronegativity, first of all, we have to see periodic table where these elements are located. If you observe boron, carbon are of second period, sulfur, chlorine are of third period. Obviously, from second period to third period, uh, from uh, sorry, from second period to third period, uh, second period to third period, what happens? Electronegativity values decreases. But the thing is, as we are moving from left to right hand side, electronegativity values are increasing. Let me repeat. As we are ascending from left to right hand side in the periodic table, obviously electronegativity values will be increased. The highest electronegativity value element is fluorine with the magnitude of 4. And next level is recorded for oxygen and next is for chlorine that is 3.0. So chlorine is having 3.0. It is of higher in, higher in quantity in comparison to boron, carbon, sulfur. If you go with sulfur, you can find 2.5. So that after chlorine, you can put sulfur. After that, carbon. After that, boron. Because only the fundamental we have to understand is more the nuclear power, more the tendency to, to, to pull the electrons towards that one. Smaller the size, greater the electronegativity. These are the factors which governs the uh, magnitude or strength of the electronegativity. Electronegativity can be scalable on... Mullikan scale so that uh, chlorine is of highest with the 3 value, uh, sulfur with 2.5, carbon with the 2.5 and boron with 1.5 that is given in the option number 1. By this we concluded the session question number 6, option number 1 is the correct answer. We gone with the various dimensions, various parts of the chemistry and uh, covered most of the valuable and repeated uh, information in the so many in so many examinations so that uh, definitely whoever following the kind of sessions what we are preparing a series of sessions conducted regularly they definitely achieve whatever aspiring for whatever questions we are framing are most important for coming examinations who are serious about the exams can go with these sessions very carefully so that uh, it is for sure they will achieve the goal whatever they are dreaming for right so that i am requesting you to like the channel in order to comment uh, for this session <coughs> i'm asking the question can you give the most ionic compound in the entire periodic table most ionic compound to be mentioned as a comment and you can post the uh, answer in the comment box for the session and share with the aspirants Subscribe the channel so that we will go with the new content every day. The session will be uploaded and new content and new dimensions of the chemistry will be unfolded over here so that uh, those who are observing the kind of sessions regularly will definitely get the more content, uh, quality content in the field of chemistry. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Venetone.